It is always a quirky little spot that everybody loves to come to, and it is famous worldwide. Today we're here at Mill Ends Park. It is an actual official world's smallest park. <laughs> We're kind of in the middle of NATO Parkway, so we're in the middle of the road, uh, right along the waterfront. We just have to be cautious of working out here because we do have to replace the, the plant material on a regular basis due to traffic not being able to stay in their lane. <laughs> because the public cares so much about this park and they love it so much, we often get a lot of gorilla planting that happens with material that we would prefer not to have in there. We get little army men and, and various little things that show up in the park. We always come out here on St. Patrick's Day just to clean it up and kind of dress up the park because it does have that lore about it. Many people don't know that Mill Ends is home to the only leprechaun community outside of Ireland. There was a reporter from the Oregon Journal had an office that overlooked this spot and there used to be a power pole here and the power pole was removed but the concrete skirt wasn't. The whole thing started in 1954. There was this, you know, uprising over Columbus, Ohio saying, hey, we're going to be the city of roses. We've just put in the largest municipal rose garden. Dick Fagan saw this little pothole that had been there. He probably was like, hey, let's build the world's smallest municipal rose garden and get some publicity behind that. He took it from Portland Envoy Park to battling the commissioner for who gets the title of the park, and it was butting heads between Envoy and Millens. It continued to be somewhat of a rose park for a while, but eventually it's morphed into something different. We are holding a picture of our father, Dick Fagan, who was the creator and architect of Mill Ends Park. So I think it was 1947, he started writing the column. Mill Ends means bits and pieces, so he'd pick up a lot of quips and things that are happening within the neighborhood. Mill Ends Park has a lot of whimsy and imagination and whatever you want to put into it. St. Patty's Day has always been a big celebration at Millen's Park. Where they had the rainmakers, yeah. they had uh -huh. uh, public officials, you know, just drop by, people would just drop by. Dad would go into my mom's china closet and get her good china. And mom would roll her eyes, but it was okay. And he'd take it down to the park and they would have snail races. There were some men working on the Hawthorne Bridge. One of them had a bright idea that they put a Ferris wheel into the park. So they brought a huge crane you know, down from the uh, bridge and used it to lower this uh, Ferris wheel into the park. This is when he was sick, you know, about to die. Uh, cancer, lung cancer. And this is signed by uh, the governor all these people are dignitaries in Portland. We all got into this going down to the park after Dad passed away, because yeah. we didn't want this to die down. Yeah. You know, we needed this to mm -hmm. keep on going. I think the celebration at the park was a tribute to Dad, yeah. and then it became a tribute to Mom, and then it was remembering all those people. So as we lo would lose family members, yeah. That, that's where the toast came in. And until we meet again, may the Lord hold you in the palm of his hand. Cheers. Cheers. It's a happy time because he was a very positive person. The vegan man. It's fun to see the excitement in their eyes and the history to go down because now we've got the grandkids picking it up also. It's a very precious gift that our father left us. I think it is a legacy that they left Portland too. Mr. Patrick's Day! Yeah. Yeah.